morning. How the devil are you doing this fine day? Me, a bit of a mixed bag, to be honest. Um, just had some absolutely horrible news um, about three minutes before I was due to come on air, and I'll come to that in a second. Also, I had a bit of a full start today. I was scheduled to be on a conference call in the wee small hours this morning, but it was postponed just after I dragged my saggy carcass out of bed. However, on the upside, I awoke pretty much buzzing about last night's car park demolition webinar with Mike Keogh of C&D Engineering Consultants. Mike's an absolute expert in his field, so I fully expected him to be good, but the level and the quality of feedback from the audience was truly amazing. I, I honestly can't think of another forum in which a complex demolition topic could be discussed in quite the same way, so hats off to all of you that took part last night. And if you did miss it, you can hop on over to um, YouTube and, and catch it later. As I was just saying, conferences tend to be speakers just talking at an audience. But last night's show was very much a two-way street, and it was so much the better for it. So very much, in, uh, thank you very much indeed for that. Uh, I am hoping to get Mike back on the show again in a few months' time. And I'm thinking that explosive demolition might be a good topic for discussion. I think most of us see the big bang, see a building fall, and think, wow, that was impressive. We generally don't see the months in, of planning and preparation leading up to that final eight seconds of action. If that sounds like something you'd be keen to watch... Or, pa or, pa or participate in, please let me know in the chat. Now, without further ado, um, let me roll the intro, post the question of the day, and get the show on the road. Welcome to The Breakfast Show. I'm your host, Mark Anthony. Bear with me for two ticks. I'm just trying to update all the um, people that have just arrived. Thank you very much indeed for being here, one and all. It is a Thursday, the 15th. Oh, no, it's Thursday, the 16th of February. Welcome to the Breakfast Show. I am your host, Mark Anthony. In today's show, um, and I'll tell you in a second, one of these news items isn't even included in the rundown of the show because it literally happened about three minutes before I was due to come on here. So in today's show, building an Indian mega road with Vertgen. Montebier monitors hydraulic breakers and lee pair cranes are in perfect harmony by the water. Plus, cat fetches stick. It'll make sense when we get there, honestly. Uh, but first, let's see who among the rich and the shameless will be celebrating a birthday on this day of days. Happy birthday! And it's many happy returns to astronomer um, Galileo, musician Sonny, Bo Sonny Bono, um, singer James Ingram, and to Brad Bradbury, the drummer of the specials. Happy birthday also to rapper Ice-T, to the bad boy of tennis John McEnroe, Duran Duran guitarist Andy Taylor, and to former Doctor Who Christopher Eccleston. It's also happy birthday to motorcycle superstar Valentino Rossi and to actress Elizabeth Olsen. Many happy returns to them, one and all. Now, before we get started, here's a very quick reminder of our question of the day yeah we'll get to that at the end of the show anything strange you've seen or encountered on site love to hear about it Yeah, sadly, we start with quite possibly the worst possible news. Heard about four or five minutes ago that Comley Demolition down in Hampshire is to cease trading. Um, for those of you that don't know the backstory to Comley Demolition, um, Comley Demolition was headed up by uh, Richard Comley up until 2013. Uh, Richard Comley was literally one of the nicest people you could ever wish to meet. Um, proper demolition man, but proper family man, proper family business. I don't think Comley Demolition was ever going to likely to set the world on fire, but they went about their business in a proper, old-fashioned, trustworthy way. Um, and Richard passed away in 2013. Uh, I, I think it, it obviously robbed the company of a managing director. It robbed um, his wife, Julia, of her husband. Um, children, Toby and Jen, robbed them of their father. But it also robbed the industry. I, I was really struck by that. Richard Comley was probably the best, probably the best uh, president the Institute of Demolition Engineers never had. 
But on his passing, uh, Toby, his son, stepped up to the plate and really carried the business forward. And watching it from afar, I, I never said as much, and I probably should have done because you always regret these things afterwards. But I probably should have said to Toby th that his father would have been so very proud about how he had bounced back from bereavement and taken the company forward. But now, unfortunately, comes the news that the company is to cease trading. So um, the company has, has actually issued a statement, and I want to read that for you now. It is with great sadness and regret that the directors of CG Comedy and Sons Limited Trading as Comedy Demolition have decided to cease trading and have instructed Begbie's trainer to start the process of placing the company into creditors' voluntary liquidation, or CVL. This is as a result of recently experiencing a number of clients going into administration, increased overheads, reduced margins, and an unsettled market. Managing Director Toby Comley said this incredibly difficult decision after 64 years of trading and three generations of the Comley family has not been only heartbreaking or a per on a personal level, but also for the work colleagues that we hope that we have had to say goodbye to. Sorry, as a company, we have weathered many difficult challenges over the decades, but these last few months have proved to be one storm too many. We'd like to take this opportunity to thank our previous clients over the years and wish the NFDC and its members all the best for the future there is no positive i can draw from that to be perfectly honest with you all i can hope is that um when all of this is over and done with um toby finds alternative employment um he knows too much he's he's too good a, a demolition guy to be lost to the industry entirely um but as I've said in the column, you can read all about it over on demolitionnews.com. Literally just, just come, come in uh, hot off the press. Um, but as I've said over there, all I can say is I, I, I wish his mum, Julia, uh, who is an absolutely smashing lady, um, his sister, Jen, equally smashing, and Toby himself, and the rest of the comedy team, just hope they find alternative employment, and I hope we see all of them back in the industry in some form or another very, very soon. <laughs> All uh, right, so that threw me through a bit of a loop this morning, but um, we're back on track again. Uh, think about all the hoops that the HS2 project has had to jump through. Planning permission, royal assent, route approved, budget approval, uh, route shortening, constant public and media scrutiny, and so it goes on. So against that background, imagine the Ferrari that, if, that would surround you if you attempted to build a six-lane motorway connecting, say, London and Edinburgh. Well, that's more or less what's going on in India right now, as a 701-kilometre highway is constructed between Mumbai and Nagpur, and vertical paving equipment is right at the heart of the action.
some project, right? Um, also, harnessing the latest in technology, which makes it even more remarkable, given that we built the M1 and several other motorways with a little more than a few scrapers and some good common sense. Now, my question of the day, as I mentioned earlier, is what is the strangest thing you've encountered on site? And, oh, boy, have we had some cool, because uh, let me go back to the chat very quickly. Um not sure if this was the first one, but I think this is a corker. Steve Williamson, morning, Steve. And say good morning to Ed for me, would you? Uh, question of the day. While digging, we found a bag of USBs. Uh, we plugged them into the laptop, and it was pictures of loads of grain, gravestones. Strange. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, damn right that's strange. I'm just going to say very quick good morning to Peter McKenna, who is out of A&E. Hopefully uh, home in a few days. Uh, get well soon, my friend. Um, Ken Hatcher found a box in a garden that was very much like a coffin. You don't need that in your day, do you? Um, and I, I think, not unique, but I think uh, Kerry Jones is the current winner. <laughs> a World War II bomb. You re That really is going to dampen your morning, isn't it? Um, yes, If keep those coming. If you've ever, ever encountered anything really strange on a site. i share one of my own, and this is... I was on a demolition site a while back, um, and... Apparently, one of the uh, excavator operators was notorious for stealing the other guy's sandwiches. He'd literally just walk into the site canteen, grab the nearest lunchbox, help himself to the sandwiches, and leave um, the owner of this lunchbox without anything to eat. So one of the uh, operators who was tired of having his sandwiches stolen went to work one morning via the local pig farm. So when the um, light-fingered sandwich thief, thief uh, opened the lunchbox, he was presented with four very large and very smelly Big testicles. That's how you get your own back. Right, let's have a bit of this. And we're off to Las Vegas next to see what hydraulic breaker maker Montemir has, uh, has up its sleeve for next month's Conexpo exhibition. Let's take a look. Obviously, Montebier isn't the first to bring remote monitoring to the field of attachments. Pretty sure they won't be the last. If anything, attachments, I think, could be the next big challenge for telematics boffins. And still, they're coming in. Uh, let's have a look. Um, I'm going to say very good, quick good morning to Gary Muirhead. I was actually starting to get worried because I hadn't seen his name in the chat. Uh, <laughs> I should have read that before I threw it up. Um... Stranger things that Gary has encountered is a cross-dressing JCB operator with lipstick, painted nails, and a wig. <laughs> uh, there's there's an image in my head now that I will never unsee. Nick Drew, morning, Nick. Uh, found a bag of candelabras. Another swag in a ditch we were clearing out near Salisbury. Turned out they were stolen from a nearby stately home. Man alive. Um, 
Uh, let's have a look. Steve Williamson is back again. Uh, while on a wind farm, a World War II bombing range, we had an induction about uh, if we see or find anything, stop and call. The safety guy told us uh, that just days before he had an excavator driver shout over to him, I have something for you. He, I went over and opened the cab, and the driver had a, an old bomb he found in the cab and said, I found this. I thought I'd keep it for you. <laughs> there, there was a case literally a couple of days ago that somebody walked into... Um, a police station, and I think it was fairly close to me. I can't actually remember the details, but walked in with a live hand grenade that said, I, I found this. What, what are you? And I think the police officer behind the desk ducked. Yes, uh, lots of stuff. Uh, and if you've got anything else weird that you've encountered, bombs seem to be a big thing, but cross dressing JCB drivers, they're my personal favorite so far. Now, let's have a look at one of these. <laughs> So, stick steer. I tried it once on a cat wheel loader. Couldn't get on with it. Couldn't master it at all. But there are many that believe it's a huge benefit for productivity, comfort, and various other bits and pieces as well. So, let's find out more. make of that are you pro stick steer or are you anti stick steer i'd love to get your thoughts uh, i'm going to throw this one up very quickly uh gary muir had said love the chat last night never thought talking about car parks would have been so interesting i know i'm i'm constantly staggered um i was digging some footing says tim gosden morning tim uh, on a private job and discovered several world war ii gravestones which we hand into the local church another job i found a lovely camera in a bucket still got the camera but too frightened to get the film developed what was on it. Uh, I reckon it got stolen was chucked over the site fencing. Could well be. Um, now speaking of cameras, one of, while, while that video was playing, I was just reminded of a story and, and I I didn't see this. So I, I, I hasten to add this may just be an apocryphal legend story uh, made up by a, a bored demolition contractor. But I, I went to a demolition site once and it was an old farm building or a series of farm buildings um and you know we, we talked about how they were going to take it down what they were going to do with the waste afterwards the usual sort of thing that i would normally cover but they were talking about the fact that they had been delayed the, the start of the job had been delayed um because of the police presence and apparently the police had spent the best part of a week <laughs> a week staking out this disused farmhouse because apparently it was being used as a set for a porn film quite why they didn't raid it on day one I'll just leave to your imagination. But yes, they staked it out for a week and apparently filmed the activities going on within. So there you are. Uh, Al Grierson says, stick, 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 steer. stick steer is quite good. I've had rubber duck operators wishing they could finally remove the steering wheel and column from their machines. Yeah, well, we, we reported on it the other day, um, thanks to somebody who sent it over from TikTok. I think that may have been Gary Muirhead about the fact that some of the cat machines now, cat wheeled excavators, 
you can unlock that as an option using nothing more than software, although I think it was $100 to trial it and then probably a whole lot more than that to actually install it. Um, let's have a look. I had track steer through my steel wrist on a 30-ton case. Wonderful thing, says Gary Muirhead. Um, and Dan Cullen says, looks pretty good. What about using your dipper and tracking? Uh, I think it's a flick of a switch. Can't, I won't swear to it because, as I say, I've only ever tried it on uh, a wheel loader. And bearing in mind, when I was driving the wheel loader, I mean, I'm a terrible operator anyway, as I always remind everyone. But one of the things that, that struck me was I was this was first generation. I'm going back 20 plus years. And there was a steering wheel in front of me, but I had a lever. And you, uh, as, a, as a car driver... You, your your default is to reach for the steering wheel when you want to turn, and it was it was hard work. I didn't get on with it at all, but hey, as I say, I'm a terrible operator. Um, we need a bit of this in our lives, I think. Since the finance bill came into effect in April, the construction industry has seen a surge of fuel thefts. The rising cost of living has placed an additional risk of theft by employees and contractors, as well as opportunistic thieves. By using diesel dye and placing warnings of its use, you are sending a clear message that this is your fuel. And we're going to play out today with a video from the Mighty Libia that shows the dexterity of their cranes. A dual lift must be one of the most difficult tasks to perform. Two cranes working in perfect harmony. The lift choreographed down to the split second. And yet these guys somehow managed to make it look easy. Libya videos are almost as good as their equipment, aren't they? Sorry to interrupt the guy with the funny glasses, but if you're enjoying this video, please hit the like button as it helps our channel. Or, better still, share this video with a friend or a colleague. Thank you. Right, back to Beardy. Right, that pretty much wraps up the main part of this morning's show. I'm going to roll the outro in just a second before leaping gazelle-like over into the chat to see what you're all saying today. If you can't stick around for that, then please stay safe. Look after yourself, your family, your friends, and your colleagues. Have a great day, and thanks for watching. But if you do have the time and the inclination, I'll see you on the other side of this for what is now known amongst the uh, amongst the uh, the refined individuals in our chat as the crack. So we want one of these. <laughs> Right, let's get a bit of music. Um, I am going to go through the chat. Um, music. Maestro, please. There we go. How are we all doing today? Um, let me get the chat up and we'll we'll go through that first and then I'll, I'll start banging on about something else. Um, who was first off the, uh, off the mark this morning? Steve Williamson. Steve Williamson has, has clearly got nothing better to do because he seems to be first in the chat on a regular basis these days. And very welcome he is too. Thank you very, very much indeed for joining us, Steve. Uh, always welcome. Um, just a very quick, and I wish I'd brought it in with me. Uh, I gave away, um, this is going to go to the post office to go to Gary Muirhead in just a second. I ran out of time yesterday. Uh, but we have got another. We've got a woolly um, 
plant works hat, black and orange um, plant works hat. I'm going to have that up for grabs tomorrow. Um, and bearing in mind, Steve, that you've got some um, inclement weather headed your way if it hasn't arrived already. I would warn you in advance, you might want to be here for tomorrow um, and you might get yourself a nice woolly hat. Um, Nick Drew is in the house as well. Morning, Nick. Hope you're fit and well. Uh, Las Vegas awaits um, for both Steve and Nick, actually. Uh, looking forward to that enormously. Uh, Al Grierson, um, good morning, Mark. Uh, good morning, gang. And thank you very much indeed for your participation last night, Al. Um, some fantastic questions from across the um, across the whole of the audience last night. Um, and we've had lots of messages since um, from lots from overseas, funnily enough. Uh, I don't know why they didn't take part in the chat, um, but we've had lots of uh, messages from overseas um, saying what a great um, show it had been. So we, we are planning to do more. Um, and I really do quite fancy doing something on um, explosive demolition. And I do have an ulterior motive. Whenever we post, particularly on Instagram and Facebook, whenever we post um, video footage of an explosive demolition, we are generally inundated with people, generally Americans, generally wearing tinfoil hats saying, that reminds me of the World Trade Center. It was a controlled demolition. I think somebody, and maybe Mike uh, Keogh is the person for that, somebody needs to stand up and explain just what goes into uh, an explosive demolition. Um, like, to bring down the World Trade Center, well, for a start, you wouldn't have started at the top. Explosive demolition begins at the bottom at, at stages, and then gravity does the rest, so there's that. But then over and above that, in order to actually bring down a building, not just a World Trade Center, but a tower block, you have to expose beams, you have to drill the beams, you have to insert the, the, the explosive charges, all of which can take weeks, months, sometimes even years to prep a, a big tower block. I think somebody working in the World Trade Center may have just spotted that, a gang of demolition workers exposing and drilling beams and inserting explosives. So yes, I'd like to do that one. Um, Mick Norton's here as well. Morning, Mick. Uh, thank you very much indeed for being here. Ken Hatcher is in the house. Morning, Ken. Uh, and Jim Turner's here. Morning, peeps. Yeah, morning to you as well, Jim. Um, 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 um. There he is. I knew he'd be there somewhere. Uh, Gary Muirhead. Morning, Gary. Um, I, I, the, the, for some reason, the chat stuttered a bit today so i had nothing nothing then a, a blast and so I, I missed your arrival but thank you very much indeed for being here um so um yes question of the day was what is the strangest thing you've encountered on site um usbs with photographs of gravestones that's strange enough uh peter mckenna uh, i've already said uh, get well soon he is out of a a and e and he's now on a ward um mending his chest hope he gets well soon uh box very much like a coffin in a garden all these things would put a dent in your day, wouldn't he? Uh, wouldn't they? Uh, Ed says hello. He's driving uh, this morning and won't get on to watch the live. Tell him, tell him we were giving away ten pound notes and he missed out. That should really improve his day. Uh, Kerry Jones says a World War Two bomb. Funny enough, I, I mentioned the Institute of Demolition Engineers uh, a little while ago. There was an Institute of Demolition Engineers um, live seminar back when we used to do physical seminars. You know, with people in the same room. Um, and one of the guys um, that was, I, I think, I can't remember what his position was, but I think he was going to be one of the speakers, a guy called Duncan Riddell. Um, literally about a week before he was due to speak at the IDE event, um, he had uh, uncovered uh, an unexploded bomb on a site, I think it was down in Bristol. So very hurriedly, I went down to my local um, print shop and had him a, a high-vis vest made with uh, Danger UXB on the back. And he wore it during the presentation, which, yeah. Very proud of that. Um, let's have a look. Um, go back to the Indian uh, project to get four, 701 kilometers, pretty much a straight line, six lanes wide, all largely technology driven. As Ken Hatcher says, we can't fill a pothole, uh, and you certainly can't over in Welsh Wales. Um, somebody did send it to me, and I think it's on my, uh, I think it may be on the WhatsApp group. Somebody sent me a link to the BBC report about the fact that um, Wales has basically put the um, stop to all road investment for the time being. Uh, they are claiming that it is, it is for sustainability reasons. Personally, not so convinced. I think I think it's a case of we're not going to spend the money, but we're going to, we're going to blame the environment. Um, so, yeah, uh, if, you're, if you're on the WhatsApp group, go and take a look. If you're not, I can probably throw you up a link to it. There you are. If you'd like to join the WhatsApp, WhatsApp group, you can see the link to it in the chat. Um... Yeah, Dan Cullen on the same project, uh, that Indian uh, road project, some project that, but I wonder how well the operators are looked after and the rates of pay. Uh, I, I would imagine the rates of pay pretty poor, 
safety for. Um, but again, I, I would imagine, bearing in mind, you know, the complexity and um, the technology that's that's crammed into those working machines, I would imagine there's been a fair bit of training going on. So maybe, maybe they are earning better money or maybe you know, shipping in operators from elsewhere honestly don't know the answer to that um, yeah there's another bomb um, <laughs> bombs are plenty bloody Hitler's got a lot to answer for hasn't he the, the, I, as Norm MacDonald the comedian once said the more I read about Hitler the more I think he was a real jerk <laughs> yeah uh, Mick Norton never, underma- uh, never underestimate the formidable expertise of Indian construction workers dead right um, they can make do with very little and still come up with the right right solutions a bag of candelabras i can't help thinking of only fools and horses when i see the word candelabra um <laughs> right um i'd quite like that on a t-shirt <laughs> strangest thing you've encountered on a site a cross-dressing jcb operator with lipstick painted nails and a wig yeah uh, Gary Muhead, love the chat last night. Never thought talking about ga- uh, car parks could, could be so interesting. It's staggering, isn't it? Um, and it does make you see things in a completely different light, I think, um, when you actually get up close. I mean, I, I, as I say, like I mentioned it on the show last night, we had a, an, an issue in one of our local car parks at the Ashley Centre in Epsom. It's about a mile and a half up the road there. Uh, there was a fire there, and it didn't do a great deal of dam- damage. I think it burnt out two cars and it was it was inspected but the thing has been, basically been propped for two years possibly longer now um, and there's a there's an area where you can't park why can't you park there my guess is it's been undermined but it's still there and it's still in use just not that little bit um uh here's another one uh, tim gosden uh, digging some footings in a private job discovered several world war ii graves i think i mentioned this actually uh, but also found a camera too frightened to get the film developed um uh, what was on it uh, i reckon it was stolen chucked over the site fencing um uh, there's a bit of comment about there about stick steer um question of the day uh, mick norton has said uh, in 1992 mick did you keep a diary or did you keep a journal or something? Because you seem, you, you've either got a photographic memory of where you were at any given time, or you've got a diary. If it's a diary, for the love of God, sir, publish it. Right, question of the day. In 1992, I was w- walking behind a grader ditching on Her Majesty's Queen, uh, Her Majesty the Queen's Balmoral Estate, when up sprung several multicolored cables. It was only, uh, it was the only direct communication link between Balmoral and 10 Downing Street. You, you really, you really don't want to be digging that up, do you? Um, and which reminds me, I, I don't. I'm sure I've mentioned this before because I found this absolutely fascinating. When the um, the crews came to dig the Channel Tunnel as we know it now, they actually used the um, uh, the same route that had actually been previously dug pretty much by hand in Victorian times. And apparently, they got a mile, mile and a half out under the channel before they stopped. And the reason they stopped was that they couldn't come up with a, a way in which um, the tunnel could be closed to prevent a French invasion. They couldn't think of a way to, to, um, to trigger a closure of that from 10 Downing Street, and so the project was stopped. But they got so well advanced and it was so well done that when we actually put the proper channel tunnel in, we went, went through exactly the same route. The Victorians, eh? Don't you love them? Um, Steve Williamson, I think we're back on the subject of stick steer. Um, the cat we had at Belmer had st- stick steer. He says stuck steer. I think he means stick steer. Was not my cup of Tesla. I think you. <laughs> I think your um, your predictive test test your predictive text is um, working overtime. Was not my cup of tea. A bit rapid, but was told you can tune it. I like to track and operate at the same time. When on steer mode, you can move the boom joystick. Steering on a roller is amazing. Track steer on the steel wrist is good on the roller, as you can operate the digger at the same time as tracking. That's because you are dexterous, and I am not. I have to think about each individual action and stop the, whatever else I'm doing. I can't do both. I, I, I can do that, but I can't do the, the rest of it. Um, uh, I think that's a repeat of the same thing. Um, little change in the weather today. Is there? It's a bit damp here, I think. Uh, our tea time is at 10 a.m. Okay. Um, 
on site the SED. A silly Billy went for a wee in a welfare cabin. Thank God it wasn't a number two. <laughs> well, just... Uh, I No, let's move on. I'm not even going to go there. Um, just notice, I have a Pavlovian reflex of the words explosive demolition. When I hear it, I immediately get overexcited. Should I be worried? You probably shouldn't. Your wife, maybe. Uh, <laughs> donkeys, definitely. Um... Beauty of Himachal Pradesh says, love you. Well, Beauty of Himada, uh, Himachal Pradesh, we love you too. We love you too. Don't know what I did to deserve that, but you're very welcome. And as this is your first time here, you do get um, your welcome confetti. I normally only let this run for one or two seconds, but I'm going to do a slightly longer one because she said you love me. That's um, fantastic. I just want to go back to that news that came in um, out of left field this morning. Didn't see it coming. I did have a heads up uh, yesterday from Toby Comley that uh, an email was about to be forthcoming. I uh, didn't know what the um, what it was likely to be about um, and certainly didn't see it coming. Now, setting aside the fact that um, I really like the Comley family, uh, loved Richard, loved Julia, Jen, Toby and the rest of the gang down there. So setting that aside... One of the things that strikes me about this, and I realise this is the case with any um, company going uh, into administration or liquidation, but you just feel it a little bit more keenly when you know the people involved. The statement that they issued this morning referred to the fact that they have um, seen some of their clients go into administration. So, Comley Demolition, after 60 plus years, three generations, is going to call it a day. Um, largely i would imagine through no fault of their own now there's very little anyone can do about a shift in market conditions about a shift in the economy uh, about a shift in workload I, I fully appreciate that but when you go back to um for example the demise of carillion um carillion went down owing hundreds of millions of pounds i think it's fairly safe to say that the directors were well aware of what was going on but allowed it to happen um, and then just basically pulled the plug and walked away with their heads held high. Taking down a good number of um, smaller contractors, subcontractors, plant hirers, rental companies, scaffolders, the whole kit and caboodle. Is there not, and I, I, I realise proof would be very hard to come by, but is there not some way in which innocent companies could be protected at least partially from the fallout from the demise of those above them in the supply chain. As far as I know, and, and you know everything I know about the Comley family um, leads me to believe this. As far as I know, they were running the company with you know playing with an extremely straight bat. I realise it's a weird analogy given that Toby plays rugby at a very high level, um, but they play with a straight bat. So my 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 gut feel is that they've done virtually nothing wrong. But they have fallen victim to the actions or inactions of those above them in the supply chain. That doesn't sit well with me. It really doesn't. Um, and I, I don't. I don't honestly know what system you could potentially you could possibly put in place. Um, but the, the more you look at it, you know, when, when you see, you know, we, we have predictions at the moment of potentially six thousand uh, liquidations of um, construction companies this year. That's the headline figure. That's the, the companies that are actually going into liquidation. But the knock-on effect that that will have to uh, those below them in the supply chain. And we're talking about, you know, potentially major plant hirers, but little plant hirers, specialist contractors, possibly even down to, you know, one-man band operations that are providing some very specialist service right down the very bottom. So when push comes to shove in the, in the aftermath of... Um, a liquidation and you know those those at the very top of the of the food chain i.e her majesty's revenue and customers they will get as much money as they possibly can the company charged with the administration they will get their costs covered as well and then you know possibly and i do mean possibly those further down the uh, food chain might get 10p in a pound of everything they're owed or whatever it might be all of which seems very, very skewed. Now, given the fact that we know that this is going to happen, could we not, should we not, have a fund? We have a, a central levy for training 
um, with the CITB. Those companies above a certain um, income threshold are required to pay into a training levy, um, and that levy is basically used to fund the training of the industry. Whether it does or not is very much open to question. I think a lot of the money that the CIB, CITB takes in is squandered on um, meaningless reports and bandwagon chasing and initiatives that never get off the ground and so on down the line. But we have managed to put in place a central fund for a training levy that may or may not be spent wisely. Should we not, particularly when the sun is shining, you know, when we get out of this current uh, recession that we're in, should we not be thinking about putting in place a fund bit like um, you see some um, of the Premier League um, football teams putting in place um, some sort of financial support for those at grassroots level. So, you know, the likes of Manchester City, for example, you know, there are, there'll, there'll be a, a multi-million, multi-billion possibly company um, that's behind the team, but they will support a nearby team or a, they, they will twin with a team or whatever it might be send some of their players out on loan to bring them through sort of the training academy and that kind of thing, but also financial support. And I, I do remember, because this one was very close by, Arsenal played um, m- one of my local teams, Sutton United, not so long ago, five, six years ago, in the FA Cup. And the way that, that, that this was supposed to work is that the TV rights were to be split between um, Arsenal and Sutton United. Arsenal, who are worth a fortune, just went to Sutton United, you keep it. We don't need it. You keep it. And as a result, Sutton United could improve their ground, improve their facilities, uh, in, improve the experience for both players and supporters as well. Could we not? You know, when you think companies like your Balfour Beatties and um, Lang O'Rourke and Mace and Uncle Tom Cobley and all, you think about the billions that they turn over. Could they not put something into a fund? And if you think, you know, all the Build UK members, could they not put into a fund to help those at grassroots level that are impacted by um, the untimely demise of a company above them. Come the glorious day when they put me in charge of construction, maybe I'll put that on the, on the list. Uh, question of the day, Mick Norton says, I once told a very young and inexperienced army officer, officer to look inside the scraper bowl to further his sight awareness and experience. When he looked in there, uh, there was my mate having a dump. <laughs> I really should read these things before I put them up on the screen. I've told this story before. This is, uh, to this day, and I'm going back more than 30 years. So uh, myself and my former business partner and my former editor, a guy called Adrian Barker, um, had a Hanamag wheel loader on um, on loan, basically. We were doing a site test with it down in a gravel pit down in um, Ashford in Kent. And we had it wired up. I say wired up. This is pre-technology days, 30 years ago. So we, we weighed fuel going into the tank and then we weighed it coming back out again so we could check fuel consumption. We were checking um, cycle times and um, we were weighing the load that it was depositing. We, we, yeah, very, very technical given the limitations of technology. So it came to lunchtime and we parked the machine up and we're all stood there with a flask of coffee and, and enjoying ourselves. And a guy, we watched a guy walk literally the entire width of the um, the quarry that we were in. And I reckon he must have walked an entire minute, minute and a half, possibly even two minutes. He was a speck that got bigger and bigger as he got closer. And he had walked all the way over uh, across the quarry to have a pee in the bucket. Didn't didn't speak to us, just had a pee in the bucket of the Hanamag wheel loader, turned around and walked another two minutes back. It's a weird thing, isn't it? Strange things you've encountered on site. People peeing in buckets that they've, that they've walked to. Bizarre. Um, Nick Drew says, been there too, was running four machines, had three of them on, a, on for a firm who racked up a big bill and went bust. I lost everything and ended up bankrupt. A few weeks later, they were up and running again. New name, same phone number, and same people behind it. Outrageous. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And see... Again, I, I have to take a step back because, as I say, I do really like the Comley family. Um, they've always been nothing but kind to, to myself and my wife um, whenever we've, we've met them. Um, so I have to take a step back from that. There will, of course, likely be companies that below Comleys that will be impacted by their administration. Given the fact that this is controlled and, and planned and everything else, I'd like to think that nobody will be out of pocket. 
but yes, it is. And, and the, the point I was going to make was, you know, if if um, Toby and his sister and his mum decide to start again in a week, two weeks, six months time, smaller, leaner, under a new name, fair play to them. I would welcome them back with open arms. But it is those people that, and, and you know, I've seen it so many times. I get sent photographs. You know, I get a whisper of the fact that a company is in trouble, um, sometimes weeks and sometimes even months in advance. Um, and, and I do my due diligence and try and speak to the company. And obviously, because they are trying to trying to resolve things and, and, and possibly trying to stave off the inevitable, um, they, they never come clean. But I was told recently, a couple of years ago, that a company was a demolition company was about to go pop. Couldn't get it confirmed, couldn't get it confirmed, but the rumour mill was in overdrive, absolutely in overdrive. Everybody was phoning me to tell me that they were about to go. And then, as the ultimate proof, somebody sent me a photograph, and there were literally a line of low loaders taking the equipment from that company to another unnamed yard and sure enough within i think it was about three weeks the company was back up and running and didn't even bother changing the names on the machines you know they did over time but they just spirited them away so you know the directors there knew exactly what was going on and they left their um, suppliers the supply chain carrying the can as nick crew says absolutely outrageous and and that is one area where i do think you know I, I think it's all well and good banning directors, but you know, particularly when you're talking about family firms. Hmm, excuse me, hair in the mouth, piece of beard probably. Um, yeah, that's one of the, the issues with. Um, you, if you think about, a, a, let's say, a demolition company, a lot of demolition companies are family-owned businesses. So let's say a demolition company goes pop, and you know they are required required to declare bankruptcy blah de blah de blah and the director the main director possibly the principal of the company is banned from being a director so what is to stop him putting his son his nephew his grandson or daughter in charge of that company and basically pulling the strings remotely nothing whatsoever so what did we gain from that nothing whatsoever we've just ticked a box old boy does this industry like ticking a box uh so yes Yes, bankruptcy is horrible. I've had one. Um, nothing to be proud of. Uh, nothing to do with me. Um, well, obviously, it was to do with me because it was my company. Uh, again, as Nick has just said, mine was completely out of my control. Um, and you bounce back. Uh, and I'm, as I say, as I said earlier, I sincerely hope that um, the Comleys do likewise. Um, I should be paying them a well, giving them a call and hopefully paying them a visit in the very near future. Um, but I wish them all very, very well. Um, so, people, that will do us for today. Um, back here again tomorrow for the last show of the day. I uh, just want to give you a very quick heads up. Um, on the 1st of April, I've got a treat for you. I'll say no more. I, I'm not going to mention it again between now and then. But if you remember, Remember, you heard it here first. Uh, is there anything else I need to tell you? No Saturday social this week. I'm knackered. I can't. I literally, I came off of air, off air last night, and I, if somebody had asked me what day of the week it was, I'd have probably answered six. I had no idea what was going on. So, yeah, I'm going to take a, a break this weekend. But we'll be back here tomorrow, 10 a.m. as usual, for the Breakfast Show. We'll be back here again on Monday for the Breakfast Show and then a bunch of other stuff as we go along. Um, enjoy the rest of your day. Keep your chins up. Stay safe and look after yourself, your family, your friends, and your colleagues. And I'll see you all very soon. Thank you very much indeed for your strange encounters on site. Have a good day. All the best. <laughs>